I've read, optimized and bug fixed the entire Mario 64 source code. The game you see in the background runs easy 30 FPS on a real Nintendo 64 hardware. This is possible because my new code renders the game up to 6 times faster on a real Nintendo 64 than the vanilla Mario 64 code does. I've looked at every single variable, understood every function and then optimized everything listed in this 13,000 line long map file for a grand total of over 100,000 lines of code read and potentially edited. This took weeks to finish and a few hundred hours of concentrated work went into this. Why? I wanted my mod to run at a better frame rate and I wanted the game to run less janky. In the past year, I had already rewritten parts of the source to improve performance. Back then, I gained more than 100% performance in the graph render department. I've also rewritten the janky part of Mario 64's wall collision to work more consistently and gained around 100% performance there as well. I also redid all of Mario's triangle collision code. I will make another separate video about just Mario's physics because it's too big of a topic to cover it in this video. So what exactly was left to be done after doing all these things? The game's logic already runs within less than 25 milliseconds, despite the frame having 33.3 milliseconds of time to process. So how exactly is it possible to further optimize the game's code from here? Wouldn't you think it's already as good as possible? The secret is in the shared N64 memory, with one RAM bus transporting memory between different parts of the architecture. The memory is being shared between the render unit, the RCP, and the logic unit, the CPU. Room room. This architecture allowed the N64 to do every special effect imaginable, even this teapot you can see here, with real-time shadows that are being rendered from the actual geometry, at the expense of throttling performance by a lot. Before I can explain how this allows us to improve performance even further, I will have to make you understand how a frame is built up on the N64. I'll do my best to make this understandable, because it's not an easy topic. Firstly, on the CPU, we run the physics, stuff like Mario's jumps, actors, coins, all of that stuff. Then we play all the sound effects and all the music. Then we build a graph for the render unit, that tells the render unit where each object is positioned and where the animations are at. And then we wait for the render unit to be ready for the next frame, send the graph over and restart the frame on the CPU. On the render unit, we simply wait for the CPU to send over the graph and once we have it, we render the graph. Since the CPU and the render unit can run in parallel, I want to go over the first three frames on the game's boot up to make you understand how this interacts. So on the first frame, we run the physics first. After that, we play the sounds, we build the graph. The RCP is ready, so the RCP gets the graph and it starts rendering game. And while it renders the game, the CPU can go back to running the physics, playing the sounds, building a new graph, and now we have to wait for the RCP. Handling it this way makes it so that they are almost always running in parallel. Usually the CPU is done a bit quicker, which means that the RCP has a monopoly on the RAM access, which makes the RCP run a bit faster. Since they often run in parallel with this architecture, you often have the issue that the renderer and the CPU share the same RAM bus. This leads to them permanently fighting over the same resources while they are running in parallel. Having the CPU finish before the RCP means that the RCP can use the RAM bus all for itself and it can render new frames quicker than it would if the CPU was still running. This means that the faster the CPU is done, the less they will have this infighting and the faster we can render a frame. There were three main things I had to do to reduce this infighting. First, we want to fix the RAM alignment so that the shared RAM bus is not as much of an issue. Second, we have to change compiler flex. And I'm not talking about the O2 thing, we all know about it, I don't want to hear about it, it's very boring and what I'm going to do is three steps further than that. And third, I realized, oh my god, the entire source code is not optimized to fit these principles, this is bad, I need to rewrite every single function in the entire game if I want this to run well. Before any optimizations, I took benchmark of this area here. All the numbers here are shown in microseconds. 1000 microseconds is 1 millisecond, and at 30 FPS, that means we have 33,333 microseconds to process a frame. There are three CPU logic benchmarks, which are sound, the time the game needs to compute the sound for this frame, REN, which is the time for the graph render build, 
level, which is a time to process all the game's physics. And there are three render unit RCP benchmarks. TMM is the time it takes to load all the textures currently drawn. CMD is the time it takes to actually draw the frame. And CLK is the time it took until rendering the next frame started. As long as this one is below 33.333 milliseconds, the game can run a smooth 30 FPS. You can see the CPU being done processing in just 28 milliseconds, with 5.3 milliseconds to spare, and the RDP needing the full 33.3 milliseconds to finish up, giving us exactly 30 FPS. Let's see how much performance we can really save of this. Let me know what you think the final FPS will be in the comments. After talking to WiseGuy, who has read the forbidden texts, I've learned about the importance of switching between RAM segments during runtime. You can imagine each RAM segment of the 8 ones that we have to have a bottle of fuel for the RAM bus. So if you read from a different segment than before, it gets to tank up quicker and it wastes less time. Room room. So I've mapped out which RAM parts are being assessed in parallel and I use this knowledge to make sure that the game can cross-reference there as they ought to. You can stare at this graph and have fun exploring exactly why I did it this way, but me explaining this would be going a bit too far. The real way RAM works is a bit more complicated than I'm leading to believe in this video, but this is a good enough approximation to understand what's going on. At any rate, RCP and CPU have their own separate RAM segments now. The speed up from this was pretty significant. As you can see, sound is significantly improved, the render time is down by so much. The level script, for some reason, it takes even longer, I cannot explain this, but the texture memory and the CMD is faster, which means we gained around a full milliseconds on the RSP. I wanna say that this wouldn't be possible with the four megabytes that the original game uses, because using the different RAM segments like this requires the expansion pack. That is the entire reason this works, so I really don't fault Nintendo for not doing this. They just couldn't have done it. We have to give the Mario 64 source code a bit of a code review. This is their step where I rewrite the entire Mario 64 source code. I don't fault them for making most of these mistakes. C was a rather new language at the time, they didn't know the hardware they were working with, and even programmers in 2022 would make many of these mistakes. Besides, you either get to know about these things, or you get to go out and touch grass in every while. It's a strict either or, you can't have both. The first example of improvable code is unrolled loops. Since code is loaded from RAM, this holds up the RAM bus for a fair bit. Every instruction in a function takes 8 extra cycles just to be loaded. By rolling these up into loops, the slow N64 RAM does not have to be read nearly as much and we can run this code faster while also freeing up the RAM bus. Room room. My next neat little trick is that all over the code you could use so-called illegal C code like this to save one instruction. Usually if you did this you would get fired from your job, but it saves one instruction and on the N64 we need every bit we can have. Perhaps a little bit more interesting, some of the functions on Mario 64 could be made more elegant to save on unnecessary comparisons and load less code in, for example like this. As you can see in the example, the finished code is just a fifth of the size of the old one. Similarly, the original game uses a lot of useless or unused variables and sets values there. We can remove all of those, plus some that are not used in my mod. Removing all these variable reads and writes means the RAM bus has a bit more space. Room room. Nintendo is a big company that had many programmers work in the game. This results in many variables being acquired twice because they do not know what the other programmers had already written. This results in inefficient code and I would estimate that around half the variables that are being acquired have been acquired before. By removing all of that, we can reduce RAM reads by a lot, and you know what that means. It means room room. Probably also a result of many people working on different parts of this game, a lot of functions have duplicate functionality. By removing all the duplicate functions, we can save some RAM and we can reduce instruction cache misses, which is very valuable for speed. There are some, oh freak, we messed up, let's patch this up some issues in the Mario 64 source code. Instead of using patchwork fixes, you can actually fix the underlying issues which allows you to get rid of some jank and on top of that save some performance. Luckily there aren't too many of those systems in Mario 64, but every time you see one it's very silly. Mario 64 typically uses distinct lists of different types like this, but we can turn these into boolean flags to reduce the amount of comparisons necessary and as a side effect we get more complex collision types as well. This for example lets me use different sound effects and particle effects on every surface. I also removed all the safety checks of the original game. Each safety check is usually 2-3 to three useless instructions that you can get rid of. Safety checks are useful to prevent crashes, but if you just program well, you don't need to prevent crashes. 
The original game came bundled with all debug codes that are still being checked for if they are active. This causes a bunch of unnecessary code to run and we can remove it. All types have been restructured to make the files more efficient. The CPU always loads 32 bytes at once into the cache, meaning that you want to structure your files in a way that variables that are accessed next to each other are also on RAM next to each other. This increases the probability of variables already being in data cache which means the RAM bus goes vroom vroom. The 2022 version of GCC is not necessarily optimized for the Nintendo 64. It doesn't know all the instructions that the Nintendo 64 can use and it compiles silly things. So sometimes we have to force it to compile the correct thing by inlining assembly functions like this. This forces GCC to compile the optimal output and it is a small speed up overall. Sometimes a function is only called by one other function. In that case, we can put both functions together into one to save a bit of processing time. Sometimes a similar code snippet exists in many functions at once. In this case, it is actually better to outline the function, to make a separate function that only executes the snippet. Because if you do that, the same RAM address is gonna be used every time and the code is still going to be loaded, which means it runs about eight times faster. It a lot of the systems in the original source code are inefficient and need to be rewritten to properly run on N64. For example, I've implemented batch rendering, which allows the game to render all instances of a type at once instead of reloading the same data over and over. Applying this to the coins alone saved almost 2 milliseconds on the render time. This is a technique used a lot in modern rendering, but even on the N64 this is an insane technique that speeds up everything by a lot. Lastly, we want to calculate things as few times as possible. If you look at for example the billboard matrix, this has been calculated for every single billboarded instance. Looking at castle grounds, this would already be 24 matrix calculations. We can lower this down to 1 because we only need to do this once per camera. The total improvement from this is remarkable. The RDP is 2.8 milliseconds faster and the CPU is 7 milliseconds faster. We only need 2 thirds of the processing time to do all the same calculations. This turned out to be worth more than I anticipated and I'm very happy with these results so far. Famously, Mario 64 has been compiled using a debug flag, which caused significant slowdown in stages like Dire Dire Dogs. Just removing the debug flag already makes the code run about 30% faster. I've done this years ago, and everything I'm going over in this video was done after that. There's a lot more to compile optimizations than just turning on optimizations. Unfortunately, the 2022 version of GCC is not very optimized for a console from 1996. Not a big surprise. Because of how slow the Nintendo 64's RAM was, and the fact that it is shared with the renderer, it is almost always better to make functions as short as possible rather than as fast as possible on modern computers. For this, I switch between size and speed optimizations from file to file, depending on what context they are being used in. I'll be honest, I'm a dumbass with compilers, so without the other modders' help, I never would have been able to figure out how to speak to the compiler effectively. Considering how little effort it was to pick out good compiler flags, it's almost paining me to see how much this helps. The CPU speed stayed almost the same, it loads less code now, but the code that loads also runs slower. However, loading less code had a great speed up on the RCP and our frame rate on the scene is now easily above 30. It is also important to write code in a way that it needs as little data as possible to access. Accessing less data means the RAM bus is going to be available more and we can room room more easily. One big offender of this is the shadow calculations. The original game goes through this whole code, allocating new vertices and triangles to dynamically build shadows, when we could just be gigantic nerds and push a single matrix and do the whole math on the RCP, which is vector processing instructions, which is computationally much faster and it needs next to no data transfers. This ends up actually speeding the RCP up, despite the RCP doing more total work due to the RAM bus being more free, which means room room. We can also move things that the CPU only writes but never reads to the uncached RAM. The CPU has to write out a lot of data for the RCP to actually render the game, which is what I called the graph build before. We can keep the cache more free and make sure the other data is still being efficiently loaded. With this being applied to the whole source code, the performance improvement is amazing. We went from 29 FPS all the way up to 41 FPS. That's a 41% increase in frame rate. This rewrite has other crazy implications too. Keep listening and you'll be blown away. The next chapter might get your pants dirty. Prepare to change. The original game had a bottleneck in both the CPU and the renderer, which made making a multiplayer modus 
impossible. To get the comparison, before this video, my CPU took 30 milliseconds to calculate the frame, and with two players, it most likely would be in the mid 40s, meaning 20 FPS would have been the maximum they could have achieved. And this was after I had already more than doubled the rendering speed. Running all the code simply took too long to render multiplayer on 30 FPS. And even my multiplayer, with compiler optimizations turned on, often ends up lagging down to 20 or 15 FPS. Nintendo cited this to be the reason they had to cut Luigi from the original game. But what if I told you they didn't have to cut him at all? With these new cleanups, Breath Render is easily 8 times faster than in Vanilla Mario 64. This bottleneck no longer exists. You can see that even if we do calculate the Graph Render twice, which by the way we won't have to, but even if we did, we would come out to 22.5 milliseconds, which is easily enough time to compute the whole frame. The bottleneck for Return to Yoshi's Island is typically the RCP, because drawing pixels is very slow. The RDP needs 23.7 milliseconds to draw a 240 by 320 N64 screen. However, if you put two 16 to 9 split screen windows right next to each other, you actually end up filling less pixels than one big 4 to 3 window. That means the RDP has to draw less pixels, speeding up the RCP significantly. And also keep in mind, there's less pixel writes means the code has more access to the RAM bus and runs faster, which means room room. That means that there is a good possibility that a multiplayer mode will run just fine. There's a concern with polygon counts, but that typically is not a huge issue. I've already made a multiplayer mod for the original game, but my new game will require a more complex solution due to all the new code added. I have started preparing parts of my code to be able to allow making a multiplayer mod later on, but I'm obviously not done yet. There is a good chance Return to Yoshi's Island will release with a built-in split screen multiplayer mode. Get excited! At this point, this is kind of a Theseus ship of the original Mario 64 source. Nearly everything has been either replaced or edited. Even Mario's 3D model and the enemies have their own custom models. Let's talk about improvements. Keep in mind, these are numbers compared to O fast compilation with all the previous optimizations I've mentioned. If you compare them to the vanilla Mario 64, all these numbers easily more than double. Sound is 24.4% faster. Render is 70 to 90% faster, level is 77% faster, texture memory is 87.7% faster, and the total frame render time is 22.5% less. This gains us a total of 12 FPS. I expect this to go further down as I find new things. The demo uses the vanilla render engine compiled with O2 optimizations. To showcase how much of a difference the optimizations made, we can compare the FPS in the demo to the ones of the current levels. These are very old versions of my levels from the demo I've released one year ago, and the new levels are prettier with higher polycons and higher texture resolutions. As you can see, the FPS roughly doubled in all three levels. Compared to Vanilla Mario 64 with no compiler optimizations, the FPS would probably be tripled at least. And this is also while I upgraded the visuals of the levels. You can see the current levels look significantly better with some detail added. Shoutouts to all my Patreons for supporting this crazy endeavor. If it wasn't for you guys, I couldn't reasonably spend all my time on making these mods. I hope you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more content to come. This is a major mod that is about halfway done and I'm doing my best to get it finished as soon as possible. It's been super fun working on it and I can't wait for you guys to see the finished product. I'm going to be uploading some more videos of other optimizations I've done and explanations of what had to be changed in the original source code, so do look forward to that as well.